For this video, let's create a retaining wall cross-section. Opening up the Cornerstone software, we'll choose Analysis, accept that, and for project name, let's just do Example, and I'll put in my initials for Designer. Going to the Block tab, let's choose Magnum Stone for the block type. Here we have options for a reinforced wall with GeoGrid options, or a gravity wall with the Magnum Stone extended units, or the Magnum Stone Compositive Connection showing GeoGrid options with an M for mechanical connection. For this video, let's do Magnum Stone All to compare a reinforced wall to a gravity wall. We'll click our available blocks, and let's do this GeoGrid. It'll prompt us to choose a primary GeoGrid spec, and if we want to, a secondary and third spec from strongest to weakest. Going down to section information, you can see the different design methods. The default is NCMA. There is also Ashto LRFD up to 2020. Let's keep the default and move on to geometry. We have some default values here, but let's increase our wall height to 15 feet. Let's keep a 2.4 degree batter. Let's say it's embedded 2 feet. For leveling pad depth, let's keep it at 6 inches. For the leveling pad width, let's keep it at 6 inches for beyond the front and rear of the base unit. Here you can see the back slope and toe slope. For back slope, let's do 10 degrees and 5 foot long, no offset. For toe slope, let's also do 10 degrees and 10 feet long. Here we have our loads, our live load, second live load, and dead load. Let's say for our example retaining wall, it is next to a road and we'll use 250 pounds per square foot. Let's say it's 5 feet from the wall and about 24 feet wide. Going down to soils, we can choose our soil properties. We have the phi angle of friction, cohesion, and gamma values. We have the reinforced soil that's being reinforced by geogrid behind the wall, the retained soil behind that, the foundation soil, and the leveling pad. For the leveling pad, we can choose crushed stone or concrete. For gravity walls, we can choose a select fill option for filled soil behind the wall with an angle of excavation. Let's leave the default angle at 45 degrees. If we go down and hit gravity design, that'll actually create a cross section for a gravity wall. We can see our units, our wall height and wall depth, the toe slope, back slope, and live load in blue. We can see that 45 degree angle of excavation with our hatched select fill and the leveling pad below the wall. For the units we have MGS for Magnum Stone Standard Block, TBH is a top block half high block, M48 is a 48 inch unit consisting of a standard block and 24 inch extender, M72 is a 72 inch unit with a standard block and 48 inch extender. The 96 inch unit is a standard block with both a long and short extender. Here we have our results table with forces and factors of safety at different elevations. If we hit forces and moments, it'll show a table of unfactored forces and moments, and a table of forces and moments for bearing and eccentricity. If we hit all forces, it'll show all the forces at different elevations. If we hit reinforce design, it'll create a similar cross section of a geogrid reinforced wall. It shows the geogrid lines behind the wall, and you can see the software created an 11 foot 0.5 foot long geogrid using the SG200 spec. For static results, you'll see the same values. Seismic results is blank since we haven't enabled the seismic factors, but we'll go back to that. If you hit global, it'll show the cross section, and we can hit global stability to show all the potential failure planes. We can go to global results and see the results at different points and global slices at different points. If you go back to graphic, we can hit compound stability and see the compound results and slices values. If we go back to the gravity wall and then go to seismic, we can enable seismic factors with a default PGA of 0.2. If we hit update design, we can actually see that the wall fails at this third block. If we recreate the cross section by hitting gravity design again, we can see the block was then extended and no longer fails. Down here, we can actually edit the wall by shortening or lengthening the units. If we click that third one and shorten it again, we can see it go red with NG for no good. Let's lengthen that again. If we go to reinforce design, we can see a yellow warning for this top layer. We have similar options to shorten and lengthen the geogrids, move them up and down, insert or delete them, or use a stronger or weaker spec. If we increase the length, you can see it is no longer yellow. If we increase the bottom layer length and hit all same length, they are all now 20, 12 feet. If we go to water, we can enable a water analysis. If we use a height of one foot for the front of the units, 
the black automatically goes to one feet since Magnum Stone has a permeable wall face. If we hit Update Design, you can see the water line, and there are no warnings or failures. If we go to Gravity Design, we can see the bottom layer is now red. To fix that, let's try lengthening it. It looks good now, but this unit is now much bigger and might increase the excavation. Instead, let's try lengthening the unit above it. We can see that actually worked too. And that just about covers creating cross-sections.